paint, if you don't have this little white bar down here, if you can just kind of slide your mouse down and click, you should see this white bar coming up. Um, if you go over here to the basics of online learning, which is the name, the, the nickname I gave this course, um, and you click the arrow, you should be able to find three attachments now. Uh, I'm going to quickly just go over what those three attachments are. Um, feedback will be at the end. I'm, I'm trying to gather feedback to see if we need to do more of these, more specific, what content's helpful, what's not. Um, so at the end of that, if you could just fill that out, it's like three questions, right? Uh, attendance is twofold. One, I, I'm curious on who's logging on, and so I can go back and kind of track that after the fact and maybe uh, target and reach out to people. But I'm also really curious um, if we are going to be able to get some professional hours for this or, you know, CEU, PDU, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, so I'm tracking attendance now just, just so I can say I have it. If, if we're able to honor that, that would be wonderful. And then webinar questions is uh, – and anybody can edit this uh, Google Sheet, and so if you have a question that doesn't get in, answered in the chat or you don't feel like asking in the chat, um, you can click on that right there. Um, one more time in case you were wondering how I got down there. If you don't have this white bar and you're only seeing um, some people and my screen, uh, see how it went away. If you kind of slide your mouse down there, it should pop up. If it doesn't, just give your mouse a little click down there, and usually this bar will pop up for you, and then you can find those attachments. All right, so um, we're going to get started here in about a minute. So I just want to make sure people have they are they are able to uh, enter the attendance. And if you were here yesterday for the 10 a.m., this is the exact same thing as yesterday. Um, so I would leave no hard feelings. Um, you know, there I understand. So uh, we'll get started here in just a minute. Just make sure you get attendance put in, and and then we'll get rolling. All right, one more thing about um, Google Meet is we're going to – the norm is just uh, – and, and the norm that I would set up with my with my students would be uh, to, to have everybody mute their microphone. All I did uh, when I logged on here, if you saw, if you were already on, you probably saw me do it. Um, but what I did was I just had a Google slide. Uh, I shared my screen. I had a Google slide that just had the introduction, right, just so everybody knew that I was here and I, and I, and I was aware. And it's not just your – sitting in silence waiting for the teacher. It'd be like uh, back in college when, you know, the, the roads were bad or um, you had some snow or something and then you were wondering if, if the professor was going to show up, you know, what's the what's the limit, right? So if I'm running a couple minutes later, I'm trying to gather my things together. Uh, I, I like to post that slide up there just so everybody knows. I'm here. I'm ready to go. I might be a couple minutes late. All right. So that's kind of the, uh, the, the norm on that. And then if you have a question, Feel free to. Um, oh no! Uh, feel free to unmute and ask your question. You can interrupt me. It's okay. Oh, you guys can't see the attachments. That's not helpful at all. Uh, Josh has posted the attachment link or uh, the attendance link. I will. I will repost that. Um, Can, it, can anybody, uh, is there anybody out there that sees, the attachment thing is brand new to me as of this morning. I didn't use it yesterday. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm learning this tool as well, which, you know, uh, it's a little bit messy and unrefined, but that's okay. Um, is there anybody out there, maybe a BTC or somebody who sees the attachments and can share their screen and show us that? Before we Jason, it's not working. So It's not know. working? No, it's. I'm guessing it's because we did not join via calendar link. Uh, okay. So we'll just post those on um, here. Let me, I, I just kind of want to show you what I did just so you know, um, well, you saw it on my screen, but on in, in Google calendar, I set up um, this meeting. Okay. So all I did was I created an event. If you're not comfortable with Google calendar, that's fine. I created an event. Um, so I just click on where I want my event to start. Let's say I want anyone to start here, right? Okay. Oh. And then uh, under conferencing, 
all I do is click that and it instantly puts up the Google Meet. Okay, and then I just copied that link over for everybody. That's all I did, right? It's, it's pretty, and then I named it whatever I wanted to name it, right? And then under the description, um, I tried to attach some some files here and, and we've got some issues. So we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, I'm running video sessions with students at one o'clock, so I gotta figure it out by then, but we'll get it figured out. It's no big deal. All right, so there's the attendance. Uh, we'll, I'll, I'll post the other things throughout the chat as well. Okay, so. Oh, you couldn't even see that. Man, I'm struggling today. I'm, I'm using two computers as well, so that was a fail. So uh, on calendar, um, click on, if you wanna create an event, you just click and, and type in whatever you wanna type in for your event name, let's say it's your course or whatever. And then if you wanna add conferencing, you just go right here. And, and then you have your Google Meet. I'm sorry, I was doing it on another screen and you couldn't see it. So I promise it won't be that bad the whole time. And then I, I added some links in here and it, it didn't come over for you. So I'll have to figure that out. All right. So uh, this this webinar is really just, um, you know, a foundational approach to online learning. Uh, I'm not going to go in super depth on any specific tool, um, but I will I'll, I'll hopefully give you some ideas and some some places to jump off of and just to kind of build your confidence that you already have some tools in place that you can use. Um, to help your kiddos. Uh, so the first thing I've started every webinar with is an expectation versus reality. Um, <laughs> the expectation is that it will be clean and organized and everybody's going to learn. And then some of you are already home with kids and you realize <laughs> it's more like what you see on the right. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not as clean and organized as you want, right? Uh, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old at home which is why I'm currently in my office doing this and not running it from home uh, because <laughs> that's kind of my life, right? Um, so just just have a realistic expectation for what you want out of the next couple weeks once we start doing this online learning. There's there's going to be a steep curve for a lot of us, uh, teacher and student, right? So so we need to really we need to really join together and be understanding. Okay, so that's kind of my first little thing. I'm, I'm going to start every webinar with that. Um, Next is the in-house website. Uh, so if you just go to swcsd.us and if you go down to for staff only, you are gonna be in the in-house site, right? And uh, you can click right here and there's a landing page for all resources, right? So all I did, I was just on, I just went into the in-house site and right there on the front page is this, is this landing page for electronic teaching and learning resources. Um, you, you can only get it as a Southwestern City Schools employee, so if you have a you know friend or spouse that works in a different district, that's not this isn't designed for them, this is designed specifically for our district, and people are adding our curriculum department, our tech department, um, our data department, people are adding things to this all the time. So check back daily. I haven't gone through uh, all of these in the past 24 hours, so I'm sure they've they've changed drastically since I last saw them, right? So you can keep checking those. Those are those can be a helpful place if you're looking for something and you're not sure um, where to find it. Um, you can always reach out too. So I just wanna share that in-house website with everybody, every webinar. Uh, here's here, These are kind of my uh, philosophies on online learning and, and they're not just mine. I, I've watched countless people talk about this, people who have run webinars for years. Um, people who this is kind of their life, uh, and and these are these are consistent with them. So keep it simple. Let's not try to you know make some big production with fourteen different videos with links, and um, they have to click through a hundred things and try to figure out what what you're asking them to do. Um, let's not use twenty different platforms to deliver content or to collect data. Uh, let's let's go with what kids have already used. If they haven't really used much in the classroom, I would keep it to Google tools pretty much exclusively. Um, and, and keep the the lessons and the assignments and the activities simple. And that doesn't mean they have to be online, right? You, you might have to deliver the information online, but then they can go do something and collect um, information and send it back to you somehow, right? So keep it simple. Uh, establish consistent expectations. 
Uh, what, what I mean by that is that uh, a, a lot of students rely on you um, monitoring them throughout the day, uh, the check-in points throughout the day. Um, I, I taught high school math last school year, uh, and I always said I, I wanted to have at least one point of contact with every student every day. And some days I made that, and some days I didn't, right? So that's 150 points of contact I would make every single day. That was my goal. And now I don't have that. Right, so it's really hard to uh, set the expectation if I can't have that personal conversation every day with every kid like I was used to. So I need to really establish what my expectations are and I need to be consistent in them. I can't waffle. So I need to think about that this week, about how am I going to, uh, what am I gonna expect from my kids? How am I going to deliver that to the kids? And how are they gonna know that's exactly what I want for the next two weeks, okay? Uh, delivery option and work collection option. That, that's going to vary for a lot of different people, and I, I'm not in any position to tell you what to do. Uh, I'm in the position of sharing resources and helping you out with the tool you want to use and maybe guiding you towards a tool that's easier or more um, user-friendly for, for students, right? So delivery option could be that you're just going to send out emails, right? You're just going to send emails to kids, um, and, and maybe it's just a PDF or maybe it's just instructions. And, and and that's that's how you're going to do it. That's what it is, right? And it might be using Google Classroom. We'll touch on that very briefly uh, today. Um, and then same with work collection. It might be kids just emailing you back work, and that's fine, right? There has to be some workflow, right? Just like when you set up your classroom and you have to figure out uh, where are the worksheets going to go? How are they going to pick them up? How are they going to turn them in? Who's going to, where does missing work go? Where does late work go? Now you have all of those systems and you have to kind of establish them online. Um, so, you know, think about it. Just think about it. And um, if it's, if an email is the way for you, then that's fine. If you want to use something to kind of house all of it, um, Google Classroom would probably be, be, your, be your best bet. Okay. Uh, communicate often. Again, back to my 150 points of contact. Uh, if kids aren't hearing from you or hearing from you once a week or only hearing from you in a whole group setting and you're never sending them personal communication, um, that probably is going to be tough for kids to think it's important or something that they need to be doing, right? So communicate often. Uh, I heard another person talk about digital telepathy. That, that's not a thing. It's really hard to read into texts and emails. And so you need to be very clear with your communication and do it often. I actually, um, I, I, I still do this, but I sent these out to my kids when I was in the uh, classroom, some postcards, right? So I got postcards made. They're just on like regular paper, very cheap. Um, and I would just send them out. And maybe now, uh, you know, those kids that you're worried about, those, those kids who have a tough home life or that you're, you're nervous, you know, you send them, instead of just sending them another email that that's going to be overwhelming for them, maybe you send them some snail mail and, um, you know, maybe that makes a difference for them over the, the next couple of weeks. So, uh, determine a schedule more for, more for you. And I mean, also for your students, but make sure you know when you're going to be available for kids, when you're going to be available for questions, you can't work 24 hours, right? You can't work uh, all day. So you have to understand, I should have made this full screen, sorry about that. Um, you have to understand when you're going to be available and then the kids have to know that as well. Um, I'm going to show you some scheduling tips using email today and uh, Google Calendar is another great way to do that. Um, so just, just kind of lay out your schedule. Don't compare and compete. Um, this is the last time in the world for anybody to compare lessons and to compete against each other and to say, look what I, oh, oh, I can't believe they're doing that. I mean, we know there's some tech savvy people out there in our district and we know there's some people who um, just haven't taken the time to dive into the tools. And so now is the last time to start comparing ourselves, right? Go with what you're comfortable with and, and then also collaborate. If you need some help, uh, reach out, you know, start meetings like this. Um, you can start these with just two or three people, share your screens, and, and a lot of great work can come from that, right, getting some help. So I would love to collaborate with people as well. So those are kind of my just like, you know, that's kind of the soapbox I'm going to preach off of for the next uh, few few weeks. So the first thing I want to talk about is email. All right, so um, let me pull my email up, which has been, it's been out of control, really. So. 
my email lately, it was a lot easier before this whole thing started. Uh, so uh, if you want to email your students and you don't have anything set up, you're going to have to sit here and you're going to have to type in each student's name at SWCSD. That you, and, and hopefully it pops up, right? So let me think of an, a student who I had last year. Well, I, okay, so, and if their name pops up, that's great, and I can click on it, right? Okay, but if their name doesn't pop up, then I have to know their student ID, all right? And, th and that could be a lot of work, right? And then, you know, let's say you're a high school student, a teacher, and you have 150 students. Oh, my gosh, that would be, that would be such a pain to do that, okay? So you can do it that way, but I kind of want to show you just a couple uh, strategies to, to make your life easier instead of doing it that way. All right, so the first thing is going to be using contacts.google.com. All right, so if you're in any Google app, you know, Drive, Docs, uh, Gmail, and you click on the little waffle, down here you should have contacts. Some of you maybe have used it. Some of you maybe have never even noticed it's there. Okay, so I'm going to pop that up. Uh, if you've never used contacts before, you won't have anything. You won't have any contacts, right? There's not any contacts originally. But let's say you knew you wanted to communicate via email with your class, right? Now I could create contacts. Um, and this will take a little bit of time, but, you know, watch some Mori this afternoon. Type in your kids' names, first name, last name, and their email. Um, so maybe you have a, a list pulled up of their uh, student ID because their email is just whatever their student ID is. So let's say it's that at swcsd.us. You don't need all this extra junk. So let's say this is uh, Jason. Okay, so let's say that's me, right? And then I hit save, and then that person is saved into my contact list, which is great. But that doesn't really save me any time yet. Um, I need to label them, okay? So you, you pick the label you want to pick, and so let's say that this is one of my first period kiddos, right? Um, so I'm going to add him to my first period label, right? And if I don't have a label, I can just add one right here. And then I'm going to click save. And that's going to populate on this list right here. And then also my label over here is going to populate with names. Okay, so you only have to do this one time. And I know um, a few tech savvy teachers will set this up at the beginning of the year. And it takes a little bit of time, but um, they find it worth it because when they go to email, if they want to email, um, if I think of the label name I had, which was Future Ready, that was one of them, right? There's my list. Okay, and so now uh, when I click on that, it automatically populates and I just have to type in the, the contact, uh, the contact uh, label name. I want to make sure I get that word right. Okay, so if you're going to email kids and you know that's how you're going to communicate, I would highly, highly suggest setting that up because I think that will save you a lot of time. Okay, another really helpful thing would be to put in your, um, I forgot to say this yesterday, but would be to make sure everybody knows what you do in the district. So having a signature in your email. I, I can't believe I forgot to mention this yesterday, but um, there are a lot of people who I email with back and forth who I in, end up looking up on Infinite Campus because I don't know what building they're in, what they teach, what they, I don't even know if they're a teacher. I don't know what they do, right? They just send me an email and I hope I can find them or I go ask somebody like, hey, do you know who this is? Um, because I, I, I really have no way of easily finding that, right? So um, we'll, when we get to the settings of, of Gmail, that will be something that I highly suggest that you put your, your job title, the building you work in. If, if you have a, uh, I, I heard there's communication going out about voicemail for the whole district, so you might want to include that as well. Um, that's just really helpful information so people know exactly what they're getting. Okay? So that was the first thing was contacts. Um, even better than that, though, might be using Google Classroom. Okay, So if you uh, have never used Google Classroom before, uh, you can do classroom.google.com or you know from your Gmail, you can just click on Classroom, right? Um, it doesn't really matter how you get to it. Um, and as of this morning, all, all teachers K-12 should have their rosters synced with Classroom, okay? Um, so this is pretty amazing. Uh, you don't really have to worry about creating classes. A lot of Google Classroom intros, that's what they have. They have like creating classes to start. You don't have to do that, right? Your class is already there. Now for me, I had to pull an old class that I taught um, because my other ones I've created because they're unique to um, my situation, right? So let's go into one that I actually taught.
Okay. All I really want to show you right now is, is the co communicating part, right? You can do a ton of things in Google Classroom. It's amazing. If I was, I would absolutely lean on that tool if I was comfortable with it at all during this time. But if you just need to contact people, right? So uh, when you click on your course, you go over to people. And there are two options here that are really helpful. The first one, if you click on this checkbox here, and under actions, you can email your whole list of students, right? So if I do that, okay, all it's gonna do is pop open a new tab here with my email and it's gonna have the list of all my students and then I can send them an email. That's it, super easy, right? Okay, um, I can also do that for all of the guardians. So the way that the guardians work in, in Google Classroom are those are also synced from Infinite Campus. So if you are, uh, if there isn't a guardian listed, then there was no email that we could have pulled from Infinite Campus. And we can't add those in after the fact or anything. Those are just synced with Infinite Campus, right? So I can hit that, and that will also populate a list for all my guardians. So that's kind of nice as well. All right. So uh, just a couple other ways to find the, the names of, of people and to, to generate an email very quickly. Everybody good so far, I think. I, I'll tell you what, it's weird. Uh, teaching is like uh, almost like stand-up comedy to me where, well, maybe you're funny, maybe you're not, but, uh, <laughs> but it's more like you can read the room and adjust based on what people are thinking. And when you do this like online thing, it, it, you're basically just going rogue. I mean, it's crazy. So it's, it's hard to check in, you know? Um, but but I, I, I'm just going to keep rolling through some content, all right? Please stop me if you need some. All right. So, uh, well, okay, back to email. I just want to show you uh, a couple ways that I organize um, that might be helpful to you. Uh, one thing that you have to be aware of, if you email 30 people and you want them all to respond, you're going to get emails like this one where it says 65 responses. Uh, or emails like this one where it says 52 responses, right? I, I, I frequently have these and they're really hard to manage. When you go inside of that, I don't want to put a bunch of information up with people emailing me directly, but when you go inside of that thread, there's like places where I've responded and then there's more responses below and it's not organized as, as easily as you might think. Um, so just, you know, just something to think about when you send out a blast email to a bunch of people and you want them all to respond to your email, uh, that's going to be a new skill for you to have to like wade through that kind of, that kind of stuff. Uh, the way I organize things, I, I have two methods. My first method is I use these labels to save my life, right? Like I have 10 emails in my inbox. By the time I leave work every day, um, I will have zero unread and I try to keep this number of total emails under 20. Okay, why do I do that? Because if I have 3,000 emails, it's just, I guess I can use the search bar, but it seems super inefficient to me. Okay, so I try to keep this pretty cleaned up. So if I have something that I know I'm done communicating with, even if I'm not done with the information, I just drag it on over and put it in whatever label I need to put it in. Okay, uh, to create a label, probably the easiest way if you've never done that before, uh, if you scroll down on this left-hand side and click more, you keep going all the way at the bottom. It says create new label. You can also manage labels if you have a lot you need to do, right? But if I just want to make a new label, I just type in whatever I want it to be, and um, and then I'm done. The nesting part is so I can have labels inside of labels. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so that would be like under staff development for me. That's my department. I have two different things. I have classified staff. I also have staff experts, okay? So I can put an email into the general staff development folder or classified staff folder or staff expert folder. Any of those would work, okay? Um, I color code everything based on um, this and my Google Drive so that I can start associating colors in my email to things that I need to know, okay? So uh, like I see red and I instantly know that's something about my department here, staff development, right? I see blue and I know I'm talking with a, a BTC, a building tech coach. Uh, that takes a little bit of time, but if you organize that now, you're gonna be really happy that you did that. 
Okay. So those are kind of just my little tips. I put numbers in because I want, I don't want them to go alphabetical. Uh, so that's why I put numbers in. This is the order I want these to show up. If I didn't, they would show up alphabetically. Okay. This is kind of how I organized it when I taught at Westland. Uh, I had administration communication, which was always so full, those admins. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't that bad. Uh, math stuff, just random math things, and then I organized those. Parent communication, which always was lighter than it should be, and then stuff with students, right? So that's kind of the way I organized it before I got this new job, okay? So those labels are really helpful, and if you just drag stuff over, and then whenever you need to search for something, you can just search right here. You can search by user, or you can search by the content, right? It's really easy. The other thing I use that's really helpful are these stars. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you an example. Um, this one's not starred currently, but if you look at all my older emails, they're all labeled right there, right? And I only have three, I only have three stars enabled. You can enable as many as you want, but I only have three. So let's get down to this question right here. I can either make it a check mark, which in my brain says, I've taken care of this. I can't move it away because there might be some information I need later or, um, there might be uh, something that somebody's going to respond to later, but I, I don't really need to worry about this email right now. Exclamation point would be the next one. And that's like, uh, you, you probably should deal with this. This is something I, I usually have a lot of those. Uh, and then the last one is a question mark. And I just click through them, right? And question mark means somebody's asked me a question, which this one seems to be appropriate, right? Uh, and I know I need to get back to that question. So I, I have a lot of those right now. Okay, so let me show you how I set those little guys up because those are really helpful for me and I never used them as a teacher but I also never managed this many emails before all right so if I go to the little gear over here the settings gear and I click on settings okay there's there's like oh my gosh there's so many settings right there's a labels tab so if you want to you can you can really dig into your labels there but I'm gonna just go back to the general and I'm gonna scroll down and uh, this is where you can like set your text up, right? So don't make it like bright yellow, uh, italic, bold, don't, you know, I just keep it nice and simple. Um, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I need that smart compose. That's like when it finishes your writing, right? Because my grammar is horrible. So thank you, Google. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep going here. Okay, stars. So you can see I have these three stars enabled, right? If I want to get rid of the question mark, maybe I don't want to use that one anymore. I just drag it down. Or maybe I want all of these. Uh, that seems like a lot to manage. You're going to have to click through all of those all the time. Maybe you can handle that. I don't even use all the little icons because there's too many. Uh, I just use the three, and it works really well for me. All right, if you change any settings in this tab, in this view, uh, you want to make sure you go all the way to the bottom and click Save. I'll show you that um, once we get to the bottom. but don't just click out because then it won't save and you'll be frustrated. Okay. The next thing was that signature. Remember I was talking about um, a lot of people just have their name, which has been fine. Well, except for when I want, I want to know who they are. Uh, but now that you're going to be communicating more, it might be more helpful to have more information, right? So your grade level, um, your building, if you have an extension, if you have a website, you know, whatever you may have, right? Like this is really helpful to have. Um, I have my, my digital badges because, you know, I, I don't know. I'm extra. I don't know why I have that. Uh, and then there's other settings as well, but let's just go with, with that, okay? And if I change things, I'd click Save Changes. Cool. I think I'm doing good so far. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, the last thing I want to show you that's super, super helpful, uh, again, a tool I, I haven't really utilized a ton, but I would in this environment. Uh, let's say I want to email all my future ready people again. And let's say, I need your help. Um, and then enter email here, right? I don't know what I'd say to them. I need a lot of help. But um, <laughs> uh, let's say I don't want to send this right now, but I know I already know what I want to send. I know who I want to send it to. I just want to send it tomorrow morning. So like, all the messages you're getting at 6 a.m., I'd love to say I'm awake, but I'm burning the midnight oil right now, so I'm, I'm trying to sleep in as long as I can. Uh, so I actually have scheduled those to show up at 6 a.m. because there's a lot of early risers. Um, so instead of hitting send right here, I'm just going to click right next to it, the little arrow, and I'm going to choose schedule send. All right. Uh, and it's going to give me some pre 
um, pre-made times, but usually I just pick the date. And so let's say like I want to send out an email every Monday morning at 8.55 because that's when my second period normally starts. And I want all my kids to know that at 8.55 they're going to get an email. Regardless of what the content is, I just want it to be very consistent for them. That's going to be really helpful, right? They know to expect that at 8.55 every morning. Uh, so you can just pick the day, right? You can just type in the time. You just type it in. It's not like a little smart thing. So make sure you put AM or PM and then you click schedule send and it's going to act like it sent it, but it didn't, right? It says send schedule down here. But if I go over here now, I have this little scheduled guy <laughs> and, uh, there's my scheduled send, right? And if I'm like, Oh man, I, I mean, it tells me right here what day it's going to send. But if I need to do something with it, I can click in here. It'll tell me this gray bar. It'll tell me exactly when it's going to send. If I hit cancel, this, this email doesn't disappear. I can't really edit it right here. If I hit cancel, I found this out last night, so I feel really smart. Uh, it just sends you back into the draft, so you can change it. And then this is, this is cool. Uh, when I hit schedule send again, if I've already scheduled it, now I'm changing it. It's going to give me the last scheduled time. That's amazing. I had no idea. I screwed up and then I found that. So I was really happy. Uh, so then I can reschedule it, right? So schedule send in, in email. If you're going to be using email, I would absolutely utilize that tool. That seems like, like a game changer. Okay. I'm actually going to delete that though. I don't, I don't want, I don't want that to send. So I'm going to cancel. Okay. So let's make sure we got all that on email. I think we're good on email. Any questions over there that I need to answer? Oh, man. Colors. I can't believe I forgot that. Thanks for helping me with the colors, guys. All right. So we're going to jump over now to – oh, wait. No, there's one more thing I want to show you before I jump over to Google Drive. Um, Maybe you, you've seen people put links in uh, to email a whole bunch of times and you're like, all I can ever do is I can hardly even get that blue link to show up, right? Maybe there's just a video or something you want to send to kiddos. Um, and and like, like down here, right, I've got my link for my website, right? So let's say I'm going to send something. I'll just send it to myself. It doesn't matter. And I want to say check out this video and write a reflection, right? I don't want to use a huge subject like that. Maybe I give them more directions here. Um, okay, and let's say I want to insert something, right? There's like the hard thing about technology, and I think the hard thing for a lot of us is there's like a hundred ways to do it. So if I just asked a, a building tech coach to, to teach the same exact thing I taught, you might see like four new things that you never saw before, and you're like, what? Oh, did he not know that? It's just, it's really hard. And so I'm going to go with one way that I know works really well. Um, so I'm just going to type in what I want video link, right? That's what I want to link to. And I'm going to highlight that. Okay. And now there's, there's some of us know the keyboard shortcut of control and K that's going to create a link. But if you don't know that it's okay. It's a little guy right here that looks like a chain link almost. It's not the paperclip. It's the one that looks like a chain link. Okay. It's going to pop open this little thing, and it's going to ask me uh, what URL do I want to send you to, right? So let's say I uh, have a YouTube link I want to send them to. Um, oh, this is cool. That's really interesting. I can't look. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's a cool video. I might have to watch that later. Um, so let's say I want that link. All, I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop open that video. I'm going to go up to the bar. I'm going to highlight it, right? So I'm just going to highlight it. And then I'm, I I can either two finger click on my Chromebook and copy it, or I can just use the keyboard shortcut of copy, control C. And then over here, I'm going to paste it, right? I can do the same thing. I can two finger click, or I can do control V and hit okay. And there, now, now that link is there. And now it's, it's not that huge long link. It looks a little bit nicer. It's easier to get through the instructions because the link's right there, right? So, I just want to I just want to cover all my bases and make sure um, that that if you want to make something that looks nice as well, uh, that's that's the easy way to put a link in. You can attach a ton of stuff to email, but that's that's it. Okay.
Let's jump over to copy paste this email. I'm going to jump over to Google Drive, and then we'll jump into a Google Doc. Okay. So again, if you're just stuck in some uh, Google spot, you know, Gmail or Google Doc or Calendar, and you click on the waffle, you can get to your drive. It's like your filing cabinet, right? And there are, again, a million things you can do with Google Drive, right? And some of us have a lot of folders up there that aren't really organized, and some of us have no folders up there and a list of files a mile long. I, unfortunately, have both. So I can't really even practice what I'm about to preach, but I try to keep this really organized. And here's what I do, okay? The folders are really helpful for me if I keep them the same name and the same color as my email, if I can, right? So if you notice, green is district info here, and on my email, green is DSC info. Now they're different numbers. I, I'm trying my best, right? But at least I know green and green, they're the same kind of idea. And that really actually helps my brain. It helped me a ton when I was a teacher because I was able to delineate information really quickly, right? I knew exactly what folder I needed to go to. I didn't even really read this. I just looked at the color. Um, to change the color of a folder that already exists, you just two-finger click on it, and you can change it. They're, they're, that's it. There's no other colors in that, right? So that's it. Um, if you're wondering how I have like all these little numbers and emojis and things, if that's something that looks fun to you, uh, let me let me show you those two things real quick. The, the numbers come from a thing called Unicode. Um, okay, so if I go, if I just search Unicode numbers, if you care about this, you know, these are it right here, right? The circled numbers. I just find them on a on a, on a web page and I just co copy them and paste them. That's it. And then they show up, which is really great. Uh, so I like those because because if right now my, I'm organized by last modified, but if I change this to name, which is how I usually have it organized, then they go in the order that I want them to go in, right? And they're organized the way. So the ones at the top are the ones I use most often, right? So that, that's typically how I, I organize that. And then the emojis, uh, there's a million ways to get emojis online, but probably the easiest way is this thing called Emojipedia. They also have emojis on a lot of these sites. But. And the same thing, right? You search for your emoji, whatever you want, and you copy and paste it. And it's just nice. I, I think there's a personal aspect that we're losing in teaching when we go online. And these little things, uh, as silly as they may seem to some of us, uh, personalize it enough that kids realize like that's oh, a real human out there that cares about like how things look and and the the presentation and and so that's why I threw a little heart in there yesterday all right so that that's the first thing I would try to organize those colors um, in in terms of organization here if you just have a million files down here this is super overwhelming and hard to deal with let's just call it what it is right so my, my suggestion to you would be to make just a couple buckets of folders you know just a, just really basic like um, these are lecture notes these are um, this is examples from other people whatever your files may may be relevant to um, and just start dragging those in so you can drag them in to your folders just like this um, if you have multiple files that you need to drag into a folder you can highlight them like you just click outside of any of the little files. Um, so you, you can't click inside of that thumbnail. You have to click outside of it, and you can drag, okay? And then you can move all those up at once, right? So that's, that's a helpful organization tip. If you want to create a folder, you click New Folder right there, okay? Or you can uh, right-click or two-finger click and make a new folder. Same thing. Cool. Uh, a, a thing that I think a lot of people struggle with is to where to find things. So the search is actually really powerful on Google. Uh, you can search by user. You can search by type. You can search by specific names. It's a very smart search. Um, but sometimes people still aren't able to find things, and I think that's because they're in the shared with me part. So shared with me will be anything that people have given you access to. It could be a whole district document. It could just be for me. Um, you'll see quick access of the people who share things a lot with me. So right now it's Rob and Jenny. Um, and, and there's stuff in there that you have absolutely never seen, right? Okay, so, so don't get overwhelmed by the shared with me. But at the same time, if there's something in there that you really wanted uh, in your drive, because right now it's just shared with you, you don't actually have that saved in your files, um, all you have to do is find one. 
Uh, let's see. So let's say I really want this in my drive. And if I two finger click on it, I can add it to my drive really quickly. And then it will be with all my other folders, like our files, I can organize it into a folder and I can, I can, that's a little bit easier for me to manage. Okay. So if, if somebody says you definitely have that, I don't know why you can't find it. You probably want to look and share it with me. And then I would just search the person who shared it with you, right? Who's talking to you. So, um, Another thing, shared drives people might try to explore. Shared drives have some funky settings that, uh, in my opinion, are harder to manage than just using a drive folder. Um, so if you're if you're willing to kind of venture down that, there's just some weird collaboration settings. I'm not going to jump super into all of the settings for shared drives right now. I mean, you can see we use them, um, but but the but the the limits are different than what a normal drive is. So you know, if somebody adds you to a shared drive, that's great. Um, I don't know if I would go down that path seeing the webinar that we're in um, right now. I would just preferably share a folder with people. So let's say you see how these ones have the little people next to them or inside the folder. That means that they, they were shared with me at one point, right? Or I'm sharing them with somebody else. Uh, so if I wanted to share my meet recordings, I just two finger click and I click share here. Yeah, I can just share instantly with people and I can give them two options. I can just let them see everything or uh, can view or I can let them do everything to the folder that I can do. Right. I can also create it so that if I want to, I can just share it. So anybody, if I give them the link to that folder, they can view it. Right. So uh, if I just want to open up that folder so anybody can see what's in there, uh, I can do that as well. I would I would keep that as view because if they can edit then who knows could be adding things to your folder, right? Uh, another way you can do that is just right here. You can just share it, okay? You don't want to two-finger click. Um, when I'm saying the link, the, the, everything in Google is just op operating on, on, a, on a URL, basically. So if you're looking for that link um, for any document, you don't want to click in there. Uh, if you just click this link up here, uh, you're going to get the link. And if it's not shared, you're not going to get the link. Uh, so let me find something that is share so you can see that. Okay, so you see the link sharing is turned on. I can turn that on and off from right here, but here's the link. So now I can copy that and paste it to whoever needs it. Okay, so sharing permissions work the same in Drive as they do in all other Google files. So that's kind of my organization for Google Drive. Uh, I would get on top of this because if uh, – like my first two years of teaching, I still had a lot of paper files and I didn't think about how to organize my filing cabinet. And then the end of the year came and then I was like, wow, I have no idea what's in my filing cabinet, my paper filing cabinet. Right. And now you've got a digital filing cabinet and it can get way worse. So, you know, make conscious decisions about how to organize um, that. This is what works in my world might not work in your world. Right. Okay. Uh, Collect and distribute work, we kind of talked about that. I'm gonna show you on Google Classroom, just a brief Google Classroom, because I'm almost out of time. I tried to go slower today, I hope that's better. If, if you're somebody who was on yesterday, like my BTCs, am I going slower? Am I doing better today? I'm still really excited, but. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Jim. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, the last thing I kind of want to show you, I'm going to do two more things. I'm going to show you just a, a Google Doc, a really basic Google Doc, and then I'm, I'm going to show you um, uh, the, the permissions on that Google Doc. Okay, and then I think we'll be good. I hope this, this is helpful. All right, uh, so I just did that without explaining it, which is a big no-no in digital world. Uh, what I typed in was doc.new. I can also type in docs.new. So this is what I typed in, doc.new. Docs.new, sheet.new, sheets.new, slide.new, slides.new. But a lot of the Google apps now, forms.new. If you just type the name of the Google app, .new, you'll, you'll create a new document in your Google Drive, right? So let's say I want to do webinar help. Okay. And let's say in here, I want to link something, right? So um, check out this article and respond. Okay. And maybe this is how I'm going to give my information to my students. Um, and I'm going to insert a link. Okay. And I can do it like that. I can do it the same way I did it in my email. So uh, New York Times article, right? And I can highlight it. 
and then I can two finger click and link. Okay, there's a million ways to link things, right? Um, and then I just put in, um, I don't even know if that's the website, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then there's the link, right? And then they can go check on that link um, and respond. So I would wanna be really clear in my instructions here. Like I would say, please respond. Maybe I'm not familiar with any tools, but I know I want some text back from them in an email to me by March 24th, whatever, right? Uh, so now kids know that all I need back from them is an email um, if, if, if that's how I can do it, right? If I want, I can have them try to share a Google Doc with me or I can, I can dive into some more tools, but in the most basic sense of the word, everybody could just type back information to you in an email and then you would have to try to manage uh, collecting that information in an email, right? Uh, to share this, um, well, I can do the same things, right? And, and I get three permissions uh, if I'm not in Google Drive. The three permissions are edit, comment, and view. Edit means that they can take this exact document and do whatever they want to it. So if I let everybody here edit it, they could just erase everything, change everything, uh, completely change my document. Um, that's really helpful if you maybe have like, let's say you have kids' names down here, like, um, okay. My daughter's name is Luna. My son's name is Avit, after the Avit brothers. Shout out to the Avit brothers. Uh, and let's say I have kids' names, and I and I actually just want them to respond right on this document, right? And maybe I say like, respond in an email or respond on this document under your name, uh, and then I say comment on someone else's post, right? Okay, and then you, you're creating like a little uh, asynchronous discussion really quickly using a single Google Doc, right? So if I share and I let everybody edit it, then they can go in and they can write their, um, their information. Can view would be helpful if it's just kind of like an informational thing and you don't want them to change anything. That's how I send a lot of things out, right? Can view. And then can comment. Uh, can comment is, let me show you what comments look like. So if you highlight something, uh, there's a, again, there's a million ways to do this, but I think the easiest way is if I want to comment on that, uh, when I highlight something and get a little comment option, and then I can say like, hey, that's not correct, right? So if I want students to just be able to comment on some type of document but not be able to actually change it, I can op op opt for that as well, all right? So, um, and then if I go into advanced, I can change it for a large group of people. So anyone at Southwestern or anyone with the link or public, okay? So that's kind of the, the sharing permissions. Those are the same on Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google, um, yeah, I think that's good. Cool. Um, one last thing, just because I feel, I, I just wanna make sure I, I cover all my bases. Let's say I, I have this document and I'm like, I really don't want to just share it with email. Like, what's an easy way where I can just host that document, right? And let's say I'm really nervous about Google Classroom. I've never done it before. I'm really scared. I understand that. That's okay. Uh, in the most basic sense of Google Classroom, you can just click right here where it says stream, share something with your class, tell them exactly what you need them to do. And right here, you can add a link. Boom. Add from Google Drive. And it's always going to pop up this recent right here. And there we go. My webinar help is right here. I can just add this link in. Uh, I set the sharing permissions correctly uh, when I was editing it. So now when I post this, my kids can see it and then they, they will have it. Almost all of our students, they haven't gotten rid of the email notification for, for classrooms. So if they have... Um, if they get a post or a classwork or assignment, anything, almost all of them will also receive an email notification. I, I don't know what their email settings are, but from past experience, that's that's the thing for most of our students. Do they check that? Mm, well, <laughs> I don't know. But they at least will get a, a, a notification in there. So. Yeah, could I just put the doc in Google Classroom? There you go, yeah, perfect. Uh, anything else? Man, we did great. That was way better. I'm going to delete the one off of YouTube from <laughs> yesterday. I'm going to put this one up. This one's cool. Uh, okay, uh, let me make sure I cover my bases.
personalizing information. So uh, some of you are going to want to avoid putting your video or picture up for two weeks, and I would highly uh, suggest not to do that. I would also reach out to kids individually because I think that's going to be super valuable. I, I don't, I, I, I know that's going to be hard to manage, um, but I, I really think that personal communication is more meaningful. Um, I. I think that's the only reason I had any value as a teacher was I, I was able to make personal connections with students, right? It wasn't really about the task. Um, my last thing is, is I, I want some feedback and if you don't want to give it to me, that's fine. Um, but if I, if I could get some feedback from you, that would be supreme. So let me give you that link. Let's see if I can just copy the link here. Um, I think I can. All right, so uh, I don't know what that link's going to take you to. Oh, that's right. Okay, cool. Uh, so th there's the link and uh, no Google. Um, yeah, Julie, uh, I actually, here's the real story. Uh, I didn't have them uploaded before I left work. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's because I sent you the wrong thing. Oh, I'm a clown. Uh, there. That one should be the right one. Okay. Uh, Julie, I, I, I didn't have those. Those those videos take a while to upload. And um, I didn't have them done before I, I got home from work. And then when I got home from work, I fell asleep on the couch and played a game on my phone. And then I got them uploaded. And now they're up there. So you should be able to see them now. The only one is the Google Classroom one is, is currently unlisted. Um, and I, I just need to put a couple edits in that one before I can make it public. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get that done when I'm done with this webinar. Thank you for the compliments. It's so nice. Oh, my gosh. Cool. Uh, well, I'll hang around for a minute or two. Um, you know, feel free to reach out. BTCs are a great help. I'm just going to keep shouting out to them. They've been a huge help. So. Um, reach out to your building BTC, reach out to us if you have questions, we'd love to help you.